the technique, the free flow of the film, um, all of it was fantastic. My compliments. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't find anything. Uh, I, I learned a lot and I got, got new stuff. So thank you so much. Thanks. thanks. I can see a lot of cinematographers in the room. Uh, I don't want to point fingers and push people into conversations, but it would be quite lovely actually to have a conversation uh, because Mrinal is here. Have people in the audience seen Amit's work somewhat? It's very interesting this, uh, when you <coughs> see, uh, I haven't seen, this film was shot in uh, I think March of 2010. So it's been four and a half years since then. I haven't seen any of Amit's work after this. But I'm somewhat familiar with what he did before this. And what's very interesting with him is uh, if you see the trajectory with which he's been working, <coughs> this film is a very, uh, comes at a very unique and interesting place in how, as filmmakers, we're constantly one, our engagement with our medium is constantly, uh, you're constantly engaging and growing and doing different things. And Amit, as you might have felt from the film, has a very prodigious intellect, very playful, very sensitive to the cinematic aspects of the medium. He plays a lot with things. And if you saw his earlier work when he was in the institute and just after that, it's all tomfoolery. He's playing with the medium, he's having fun, and he reached a stage where he had to empty himself of all that jugglery. It was like he was looking for content and he had to empty himself to fill himself up with something new. And that's when this film happened to him. And it came about because Iberhard, who's the producer, he's the museum, uh, he was the ex-director of the Riedberg Museum in Zurich. And he is somebody who has spent, it's fascinating, he spent decades and decades studying, he's an art historian, specializing in West African art and some aspects of Indian art, miniatures and stuff like that. So. He wanted to, after he retired, wanted to make a film on Nensuk. Nensuk was one of his favorite painters. And a lot of work has been done on Nensuk by Professor B.N. Goswami. So if you guys are interested, you must read in the book which is mentioned, Nensuk of Guler, uh, there's an essay by B.N. Goswami on Nensuk. And it's fascinating. It's really amazing because you see these art historians, they're like, um, they're like private detectives, you know, they're looking at all these paintings and they're uncovering the story of that person in time and they see the paintings, they see the details in the paintings, they try to guess what's happening in the life. So Nensuk was very interesting because he was one of the first painters who started painting not just religious stuff and what was the, the approved thing, but he started painting for his patron. And he started painting the story of his patron's life and stuff like that. So Nensuk was a, occupied a very interesting position in the history of, history of painting over there. So, Ibohard wanted to make this film and he came across Amit and they kind of got together and so this film in a strange way is B.N. Goswami and everything that he's done on Nensuk and then Ibohard and his intention and it all got kind of poured into Amit who had kind of emptied himself of all the jugglery and tomfoolery that he was fiddling around with the cinematic medium and then he kind of used his skills to tell the story which these guys had actually written down on paper and that's what makes this very interesting and so his engagement of how do you shoot painting, how do you shoot a painter's work or a painter's life through a cinematic medium. It, it's quite a... I saw this for the first time, I hadn't seen the full film before. But it's quite interesting because he's playing around, but he's also... It's like the content comes from a long history of engaging with uh, the history of painting and art in, in that particular context and stuff like that. So it's a, you must read that uh, essay, it's a fascinating essay, it's really very interesting. So, B.N. Goswami points out small things like how from gestures of people or how from facial features, they try to interpret what was happening in the life of the person. So, Balwan Singh in one painting, he's looking very tired and his bags under his eyes. So, they interpret that, oh, he's, you know, having a tough time in life and he's trying to run away. And, then, and so, it's almost like it, it could be a figment of his imagination. It could not be true at all. And suddenly the whole story takes off in another direction. And you don't know, if you're reading the essay, you don't know whether that's true or whether it's just B.N. Goswami's imagination which is taking the story there. And that's what makes it, it begins to get into this zone of the imagination. You don't know what's real, what's not real anymore. 
uh, it's quite an interesting way of uh, looking at uh, history, the history of art, stories, our own times. It becomes, you have multiple prisms to which you can look at things.